as for uh, we have covered given the five, last few days five out of seven great reviewing the two more left to be covered there are seven great reviewings Mahapishavakana as for the last two ones namely the fourth and the fifth great reviewing uh, as for the monks it, it is concerned with the monks about the offense if they commit this offense uh, they would uh, rehabilitate or redress this offense by confessing with a companion in holy life and also make, take a vow not to commit such things in the future in the future that means vow of restraint, restraint in the future and in doing so the monk although the monk commits such offense which are petty offenses which can be rehabilitated uh, he does not break them with intention with intention purposely breaking them he is breaking the not to put the purpose of purposely breaking the training rules so one goes to another monk that is a companion in the holy life and confess one's mistake or take part in mutual confession and think about of restraint in future in this way the monk takes care uh, not to commit such things in future and if at all he or she commits you see what go to companion in holy life and confess at once and re- rehabilitate the offense at once and this also applies to lay people lay people should also take care of their offenses in their own rights as well as monks if they uh, take care of their training then they are practice of the free trainings will be uplifted so that their physical proper mental behaviors will become unblemished and become amiable because it is flawless it become cultured general peaceful calm and if one practices can use to practice in this way one is bound to realize the path of fusion of the knowledge one of the noble one and will realize the real sensation so in this way one would train one would uh, strive in order to maintain one's training and in this way one would cherish one's training and if the monks are able to do that the monk will be able to possess the mind of a monk that is the higher mind of a monk and if he Uh, practice uh, the training of wisdom they will be more than what he mocks and as for lay people also if they if they can practice this, this concentration uh, they will be able to possess the higher mind as a human being and if they practice the nyasika they will be above or they will be more than what the human being in this way their value will be uplifted. <coughs> Understanding this, they would practice not to lower their standards and they will take more and more care and uh, they will uh, take care of their Siddha Sekha, morality training, more and more, giving preference to that so that it will become stronger and stronger, more powerful, more and more powerful. And then they will take care not to make mistakes, not to commit offenses. And in this way, the training stakeholders will be uplifted, uh, at the same time uplifting the standard of the monk or lay people as the case may be. And the status will become higher and higher as one goes on. Therefore, in the fifth great review, Though one is unavoidably involved or engaged in various matters as for the monks 
have been uh, uh, engaged in his or her own work, or helping his or her companions in the holy life, they are not forgetting to undertake your three trainings. Instead, they energetically practice with preference, giving preference to the three trainings, demanding themselves by themselves to undertake it, like a case of the mother cow looking after its calf while grazing. It doesn't, well, although it, it, it is grazing, it doesn't forget to look after its calf. So if such uh, mind, if, the world, if people in the world can possess such mentality, then the world is bound to be peaceful and happy place to live in. And understanding this, one should be able to build up one's own little world so that one's world is undamaged and step by step uplifting one's world and uh, in this way uplifting one's training, uh, at least uh, to get uh, so that to calm one's mind, one's world, so that one's world becomes peaceful, and then one can build up the world of others, the world of society, so that uh, the world, the other world, the world of society also will become safe and secure. In this way, if we continue to do in this way, uh, the world will be a peaceful place to live in, and one should uh, uh, take preference and to practice in this way. And uh, in this way means you know, practice according to what has been given in the fourth and fifth great review. As regards to this uh, sixth great review, this is how the Buddha preached. Monks again a noble disciple considers thus. Any person who, has, who possesses the Aryan view possesses such strength, strength or power. Do I possess such strength? That is how he or she reviews. And in this matter, strength is very required. One should consider oneself whether one possesses enough strength or not. Only with the strength one can do things. If there is no strength, then one cannot do anything. So it is quite natural that one should review by oneself whether one possesses one possesses enough strength. We need strength in order to resist any opposing undermining elements, we should accumulate enough strength or power in order to be able to withstand such opposite, uh, opposing elements. Otherwise, you will be the loser, and it is not nice to be a loser. You should never be a loser. You should be able to resist. So in the realm of the Dhamma, resistance or withstanding or repelling means you do it with a method of the Dharma and in order to be successful, to resist successfully, it is necessary to have enough strength to be able to resist these opposing and elements. Now, as for the Ariya, one is practiced with the Ariya and having in possession of this Aryan view, uh, he or she has accumulated enough strength of powers, and he or she reviews to what extent he or she has come into possession or accumulated the strength of power. So you need this uh, strength in every being. Even animals need this strength as much as human beings. And uh, two kinds of strength. One is strength which will give you benefit, <coughs> which is a beneficial strength, and uh, another is which will not give you benefit. As for animals, they, have, they should have enough strength, or they have strength in order to pull or push the burden, 
a load. And same thing goes with the horses. They also have the strength to push or pull. And nowadays uh, with the uh, industrial revolution, industrialization, the machines also have strength. We call it power, horsepower, in order to work the machine, in order to work, to run the machine. And human beings also have their strength in their own right. Here we are talking about their physical strength. Uh, so, as much as we have physical strength, we should also have the mental strength. So, mental strength is another aspect uh, which uh, we should possess. There are quite two kinds of beings who possess strength. Uh, one kind of being human being is the willing, rogues, bad people who have uh, bad strength, uh, bad energies, evil energies, such as they have enough strength or uh, enough uh, energy to kill, steal, uh, tell false lies and so on. Also, they can do all sorts of bad things. That is one thing. For that strength, you need not encourage such strength because they arise as a natural temperament or natural habit uh, as a result of the past lives. And then uh, this need not, there's, there's no need for cult- cultivating such strength. They have this strength since they are uh, since they are about consciousness. Just that it becomes their natural strength. However, uh, there is such a strength which is a beneficial strength which one should possess that is good strength, such as the intellectual reasoning, the power of intellectual reason. In Pali, it is known as Petitsan Karma Bala, knowing and being able to differentiate good from bad and know how to abstain from bad things, unwholesome deeds which will uh, stain or which will blemish your physical, verbal, mental behaviors. They are not desirable. So, as for another strength, uh, another reason is that you will be able to observe good things, sucharitas, good moral conduct. And this should be possessed by everybody. So the ship possess is kind of intellectual, the power of intellectual reason, but it's an anapala to abstain from unwholesome deeds and to observe wholesome deeds. If one has got that temperament, then one will be not only doing for the welfare of oneself, but also doing for the welfare of others with sympathetic feeling. In this way, one should be fulfilled with such power of intellectual reasoning, which is uh, possessed by the virtuous people. Now, just to possess what you already possess, that is in terms of pleasures or happiness or welfare or prosperity, one should not be content with one's own prosperity which one already possesses. One need to possess more strength. And, uh, and in order to realize the uh, true pleasure. Now we are seeking pleasure, but we have to suffer much. In order to gain small pleasure, there is much we have to invest, or we have to put in much suffering. Understanding this, uh, understanding that uh, such pleasures, even if you get with, uh, if you gain with much suffering, uh, is uh, not safe, is deadly, is fatal, and you must have uh, you must understand with your intellectual reasoning, the power of intellectual reason, that there is such a pleasure which excels many for the worldly pleasure that you are seeking, even with much suffering. So, in order to gain such pleasure, you should be you should be prepared to forego, 
let go uh, your uh, your, th- your what you possess your possessions in order to gain uh, more pleasure which excels many 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 for the worldly pleasures you should be able to forego your present pleasure present enjoyment to gain better enjoyment better pleasure with this in mind, you come here in order to keep this, to take up this high level discipline of the way of mindfulness and uh, trying to energize yourself so that you gain more mental power. When in the beginning, of course, your mental power is not so uh, so great, so you try to develop it, enhance it to become larger and more powerful. In this way, you undertake the practice and you gain the benefit of the practice. And then in the beginning, you exert energy, but that energy was not so uh, great, so powerful. Well, in the beginning, it is always initial launching energy. You come to uh, learn the correct method of practice, and first you try to accumulate the mindfulness as much as you can, later on building up momentum, and uh, exerting more mindfulness day by day, the power of mindfulness, the strength of mindfulness becomes greater and greater, so that you'll be able to concentrate your mind, deepen your concentration, so that your power of concentration also becomes more and more greater. So is the a power of aiming, that is applying your mind, focusing your mind on the object of attention, in order to cultivate inside knowledge, beginning with the discernment of mind and body, progressing along the path. When you come to the stage of the instantaneous rising and passing away, known as Udhya Vyanyana, then your faith and confidence, the power of faith becomes very great. You make, uh, you would say to yourself that this method is correct. This is the correct method. So, I have come to this stage. So you can judge by yourself, you can review by yourself me, to what extent you have reached for the practice of meditation and uh, how, the, how beneficial is every moment of mindfulness. So you take more care not to miss the mindfulness or you miss the objects to be noted and uh, at the same time thinking that uh, missing or losing this mindfulness is a great offense for you as far as your practice is concerned. That is coming into possession of the worst wholesome mental state known as Hiri Otaba, more of shame and more of fear, having fearful and shameful of uh, losing your mindfulness. You don't want to lose it. If you lose it, you become ashamed, you, you are fearful of losing it. So you take more and more care. As much as you take more and more care, your power of these controlling faculties, namely Viriya, Sri Samadhi, Penya, energy, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom will rise by leaps and bounds in a wonderful manner. Then when at the stage of this instantaneous rising and passing away of psychophysical phenomena, uh, you are building up momentum, your practice is, is, uh, has gone and uh, developed, it has become developed by leaps and bounds. Such is known as Bhavana Bala, the power of meditation, as different from the power of intellectual reasoning. This is the actual practice, the power of practice, the power of meditation. It, is, uh, it gives uh, effect in, in terms of real benefit of the practice. And then, uh, this is your own personal experience, not from PSA or from the teachers. And you are knowing it by your own experience, that is, knowing the power of meditation, namely bhavana bla, so that uh, you will be able to develop it, enhance it, so that it becomes more and more powerful. The one practices respectfully and carefully in meditation, cherishing, appreciating every mindfulness as he or she is cultivating. 
not wishing to lose even any details, and uh, fearful and shameful or conscious or detesting uh, of losing or missing his mindfulness, not to mention uh, committing unwholesome deeds by body and speech, kaya tocharita, vichri tocharita, which are despicable, which would destroy or disrupt your moral virtue. So, uh, the purity of mind is very important, and such is the kind of strength that you require, that is strength in order to abstain from, uh, to, uh, to uh, not to miss or to have, uh, to be detest, uh, to detest or fear losing mindfulness. This is the kind of strength you need in the practice of meditation. If you don't possess this kind of strength, and you will not be able to protect yourself, and you may be committing unwholesome deeds, and uh, not only uh, the unwholesome, uh, committing unwholesome deeds, you will be uh, suffering the consequences of these unwholesome deeds. And if you commit these unwholesome deeds, your moral virtue will be broken and disrupted. Disrupting your own little world of virtue, at the same time disrupting the moral virtue of the society and also the world. In this way, you are said to be destroying the world. And uh, so, this kind of destruction, Ahirika Anotapa, not being shameful, not being fearful about doing unwholesome deeds, is more dangerous than the most dangerous hydrogen bomb or atomic bomb. Because this kind of bomb, that is uh, lack of moral shame and lack of moral fear, can explode in your body and mind any time, destroying you and destroying the society, causing suffering in yourself and suffering in the society. So knowing that uh, they, are, they are undesirable, you come to possess moral shame, moral fear of wrongdoing, and this kind of dharma is said to be a guardian of the world. Hence his name, Lokapala, the guardian of the world, which is given to this uh, two wholesome mental states, namely uh, moral shame and moral fear of wrongdoing. Especially uh, not to destroy, but guards your own will. This is given as Sukha Dhamma, that is pure or white states, or states which have pure or white background. And uh, as for the opposite states, namely Ahirika Anodapa, lack of moral shame and moral fear of wrongdoing, is known as. Kanna Dhamma, the black states, or the states with black background. Now, as for Hiryo Dhamma, it is the states with white background. White background will repel any heat, in this case the heat of defilements. If you, if uh, heat of defilements are repelled, then there will be only peace and happiness. And as for the black background, Kanadama, which is Ainlika Anadapa, shamelessness, fearlessness of wrongdoing, is given as Kanadama, which is a black state or states with a black background. Things with black background will absorb heat, so it causes suffering. So in this uh, in this way, this uh, if these two wholesome mental states arise in the world, then the world is said to be shining. If, uh, if one possesses Hiryotapa, then one is said to be shining bright. So it shines bright if you possess these wholesome mental states. In this, hence, it is known as Deva Dhamma. 
And if when this two states shines bright, or this flourishes, then this will be a pleasant and peaceful world to live in. So the practice is, over the practice of the meditation, you will be able to experience or understand very well the essence of this Loka Palatama, the guardian of the world. Now, when uh, one is not able to practice this high level discipline or the way of mindfulness, the majority are not able to do that, or the majority uh, are not shameful and fearful of wrongdoing, not knowing how to detest and fear the unwholesome deeds, not to uh, not knowing the uh, not knowing how to detest and fear the consequences of unwholesome deeds. <coughs> they would daringly commit such unwholesome deeds. And in this way it is said that uh, it gives a plus they give a plus sign to unwholesome deeds. That means unwholesome deeds only increase more and more. As for on the other hand, if one knows one possesses these two wholesome mental states, uh, more shame and more fear of wrongdoing, fearful and shameful of doing wrong things by body, speech and mind, being very careful and being mindful, and protecting one's mind with mindfulness, sati, then also uh, before it, uh, the, uh, the defilements arise, you protect the mind, and if at all they arise in the stream of consciousness, you just cure it. That means note them off. Later, developing inside knowledge from the stage of knowing the mind and body and progressing along the paths, reaching the maturity of the practice. Previously, you have already weakened the unwholesome deeds, the defilements with the practice of Silas Maripinda. Now, you eradicate when you come to the maturity of the practice until you realize the path and fusion knowledge of the noble one, become the Sorapanna, then uh, you'll be free of relevant unwholesomeness because you become pure and noble. In this way, you show minor sign, negative sign to unwholesomeness. That means unwholesome deeds will go less and less. And there will be only plus sign on wholesome deeds. That means your wholesome deeds will increase by leaps and bounds in a wonderful manner. And then, at this point, uh, there comes the difference between Putujana and Ariya. The strength of ordinary beings and the strength of the noble ones. In the case of the strength of ordinary beings, Putujana, the strength is not so powerful, not so good. In the case of, I mean, in uh, wholesome aspects, or positive aspects. In the case of Ariya, the noble one, the strength is very powerful, the strength is very strong. Yeah. The power is very strong, yeah. that is on the positive side. So, in this way, uh, the sixth great reviewing manifests the difference between the uh, difference in strength between that of the Purujana ordinary being and the noble ones. The Buddha preached in this way. When the Dhammavinaya, that is doctrine discipline, proclaimed by the Buddha, is being taught, one heeds it, gives it attention, engages it with all one's mind, hears the Dhamma as with eager ears. Such is the power or strength of the noble ones. So this is the Mahavinaya, doctrine, discipline. The, we need to explain these two things. That is Dhamma, is the guidance of teachings for one's own welfare the exact guidance of teachings. And Vinaya is the discipline 
when one is following these teachings, uh, to uh, to be to be cultured uh, in both physical and physical power and behaviors. And the Buddha has given this uh, uh, preaching teachings with his omniscient knowledge and uh, with great compassionate feeling. And such is the Dhammavinaya doctrine discipline proclaimed by the Buddha. And this needs to be explained both from a theoretical and practical aspects. So, one should, when this uh, is preached, is taught by someone, then one should heed it, as though this teaching is for the sake of one's own welfare. It is more than one's own welfare. When it comes to one's own prosperity, one will be very careful. Now this is a greater or higher than one's own welfare. So one, one should heed it. Not to look here and there, not to be mindful of here and there, but to be respectful and carefully paying attention to the teachings of the Buddha uh, without any uh, thoughts, any extraneous thoughts or distractions. Otherwise, you will not gain any benefit and uh, realize any benefit of the uh, teachings. It amount, it'll, instead, it will turn about to not paying respect to this Dhamma Vinaya doctrine discipline. Uh, not so in the case of uh, Sarapanda, the Ariya. This we shall continue tomorrow.